uncomfortable. Judgment, criticism. Dissociation. Ticklishness. Discomfort. Holding of the breath in the chest. Unable to exhale to relax. Spaciousness in the belly. Pain in the belly. Relaxation in the neck, breathing in, breathing out. Hearing the sound of the rain outside on the leaves. Hearing the dripping of water from a drain. Self-consciousness, self-awareness, aware of my thoughts, noticing my thinking, my speaking, that which formulates thoughts, ideas, sentences, communicates or tries to communicate. There's a feeling of disconnect between what I feel and what I say. How do I know that? What does that feel like? It's unsettled or dissatisfied or just off in some way. It's just a little off. Noticing that I'm slurring my words and that I'm not speaking clearly. Judging. Minor sense of accomplishment, but mostly drowned by feelings of judgment and criticism and, and just, just wave after wave of criticism. It's like my sense of my, you know, and this is interpretation. This is illustration. My sense of my self is this person that's uh, breathing uh, in the midst of a squall or a storm with just wave after wave crashing over me, judgment criticism and I'm coming up for air for a moment and in that moment I feel like ah I'm good I'm great I'm awesome and then drowned again but it's like wait how do I get out of this if, if I can stop that time and stop that moment where I am okay where I am good how do I get out of it how do I stay there how do I um, rise above that um, that sort of torrent of just shame and blame, judgment and criticism to rise above. And then the thought that that's not, that's not the right way to do it. That's wrong. Don't rise above. Why would you rise above? Why would you separate yourself from these waves, from this water, which is where you're being hurt, where you're being battered and bruised um, and suffocated and drowned. That's the illustration and that's just the interpretation and that's just the, it's the story. And there is a, an insistence that the story is important. Story matters. In the real world, they'll tell you story is everything. And in the spiritual world, they'll say, it's just a story. And the truth lies in between. It's always in the truth is always in between in every, in, in every argument and every dimension. And oh, that's see, now we're doing a lot of talking here, right? 
And I'd started this off by just kind of trying more to feel into what was happening rather than thinking. And I'm, now I'm, I'm talking and I'm explaining and I'm telling, illustrating. So there's a sense of resignation. It's like, well, look, I can't even do feeling right. I can't even just sit here and feel things because I've got to judge. I hear the sound of the, the sound of the S's that I'm making and it's starting to annoy me. Uh, I hear the way that my voice is pinched and closed and tight and feels so tight up here and it's making me feel like I can't breathe. But if I stop talking, then what happens? <sighs> Air goes into my belly. Complaining. Like, I don't want to sit here and narrate everything that's happening. I don't want to notice and observe what's happening. Tired of being self-aware. Uh, judgment. There's judgment. You're not self-aware. Self-aware is a positive thing. You're a negative thing. Your existence is, this critical mind is, is, is painful and negative and, and unpleasant. Self-awareness sounds like a positive thing. Ah, yes, I know myself. I'm aware of myself. What self? And the, you know, the, there's, there's no... So confusion, anger, shame, bitterness, frustration, a lot of different emotions that feels like, that, that feel overwhelming and like they're turning me this way and that way and the other way. And it's like, I can't even find myself or find my center or find, um, surf those waves. overwhelming. It feels overwhelming. And the, the, the shame that comes with allowing, not, is it allowing tears to come up? Like, it's, it's okay for others to have sadness and to cry to take care of others when they're experiencing that, to support them through that. Not for me. Not for me. I should be beaten every time that I cry, hit. Sick, it's, it makes me sick, so angry that I feel like I'm not allowed to be sad or to cry or feel overwhelmed always have to be in control. Oh. And the thoughts, they try to latch onto something, some story to tell about it. Just to show, just to show the emotion without a story. It's like, you know, just to feel without a story. So in this moment, it's like there is some emotion coming through and there's also a like really trying to hold it together. After 10 years of working with my, no, more than 10 now, emotions, feelings and sensitivity and in the early days what I called femininity because we're talking like 2010 or something 2011 12 
feminine side is what, what I called it back then. Um, and yet still it is very difficult for me to do. Why? I can care for anyone else. I mean, so far, I don't know, if, I don't know about anyone, but so far, any time when I've been met with another person having an emotional experience, I can have compassion for them and it's, it's okay. And I help them and they feel helped and supported sometimes. Um, we don't always get it right, but at least it feels like a possibility that there's no shame in doing that. But my emotions are, are the ones that, that, are, that I'm experiencing in my body. It's so There's so much, you can't see this, but there, there's so strong of an internal conflict and there's been so much repression and suppression and I've um, hurt myself in ways that feel very long lasting physically to keep these emotions contained. Not something that felt right or good or natural for me personally. I don't know if it's right or good or natural for anyone, but. Um, but you can't see this, but the inner, inner conflict here that I'm experiencing where I is so, um, so physically uncomfortable, but it's not easy to just release, not easy to just let things flow. to lose control. Sounds, anyway. <sighs> like what could be so horrible that I've had to repress it for 40 years almost or some, I don't know if that's exactly true, but, but what could be so horrible? You know, I've, I've for a long time, I believed it was issues around being gay and bisexual and sexual orientation, identity issues that that was the main fear for a long, long, long time. And I've thought about what else besides that, um, is there anything else that could be so horrible that would be locked down, you know, which is because the, you know, trying to explore sexuality for me didn't never brought me any kind of aha, peaceful um, uh, reconciliation with myself. And you know, I, I hate to say things like, um, what are what the thing the things that we really don't like to talk about, which has to do with abuse, which has to do with violence, um, whether we've been abused or we've been an abuser, and or both. Um, the And these are just, 
it, there, there's a, there's a real, um, a real fear of what can be revealed. You know, we have, there's certain things we have to keep secret, right? For a long time, sexual orientation, that's something you also had to keep secret. Now, not as much depends where you live and what time you live, what era you live in. But there are certain things, there's always something that's taboo, right? There's so many things right now that are taboo that are, you know, are shameful, but there are certain things that are, it de it's such a, such a complex topic, but what, what is, mm, So people will go to therapists, right? And, or priests or whatever, and confess things. They'll say, oh, well, I did this bad thing or I'm a horrible person because. And depending on what that is, there is some level of confidentiality that happens within that and it's absolved in some way or it's resolved or Why now see, I'm getting sort of intellectual about this rather than going through my feelings. So I'm trying to explain what the fear is here because why? Because I'm afraid that I've done such horrible things that I won't be uh, forgiven and I'll lose my freedom or whatever illusion of freedom that I think that I have right now. Um, now in my memory, in my life that I've lived and I've lived around people who've been with me the whole time and seen me. So to my knowledge, I haven't done anything horrible, like murder, like rape, like other kinds of even more unusual abuses that happen. And I say horrible as a judgment because we've societally, we've judged that as horrible, violating someone's boundaries forcibly to that extent horrible, right? Um, but depending on the circumstances of that, it's more or less horrible. If you're in a war, for example, justified, uh, depending on the country you're in or the time era that you're in or the people you're around, if it's men doing something to women, justified. Um, even if they're underage women, it can be justified depending on the community you're in and how they're protecting people. You know, there's always a gray area, right? So we, we, we all, we all know that if you're connected or if you're powerful or if you're whatever, you can get away with it, right? The conversations that's happening right now, I'm vaguely aware of, I, like, I don't really pay attention to this too much on the political spectrum, just on others, but it, you know, Donald Trump and prostitutes and raping and underage and Epstein and da, 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 all these things, you know, all that stuff. And we all have, or not all of us, but a lot of people have the, the, their own versions of that. So many of us have secrets that we would take to the grave. And it's sad to me that there are, that we live in a society that, I mean, never mind the fact, see, now I'm just getting off on a tangent. Never mind the fact that we were, were and are putting people in jail for, minor offenses, you know, whatever, people are assholes. And I see now I get angry, right? Because of the injustice, but, but it's sad to me that <clears throat> anyway, now this, now this is feeling like a defense against feeling my feelings because no one wants to be the one to do that. Um, especially when you're the one on the perpetrating side, because, or no, on it's on both sides just differently. You know, I, I don't know, I don't know what, if any, usually if you're someone who abuses people, you've been abused, right? I don't know, I mean, I'm aware of ways in which I was abused, but I don't know certain details or certain extents to which, or events that may or may not have happened uh, that I don't remember, I don't know. Um, and 
So am I afraid? Because uh, I'm thinking, well, what's so, what is so bad that I've been protecting myself uh, from for all these years beyond just um, homophobia, beyond just that? You know, that, that is and was like a, a real threat as well. But what, what have I done or what was done to me that I'm not able to face? Um, and the fear of letting all the emotions come up and then revelations of past events. That's the fear. And doing that alone. Um, not within some really supportive context of like, oh, I have this trusted therapist that I've seen for two years and now I'm, I mean, or two months or whatever, two weeks. I don't know. It depends on what kind of a superstar you are, but, but, uh, I mean, reconciling, reconciling the fact that, you, like, say to say you have been abused is one thing, and then reconciling the fact that you have abused someone else is another thing. And on, depend, and on what level have you done that, you know? And, um, and was it your fault or not? Uh, well, you know, that's... Uh, and I don't have anything, personally, I don't have anything in mind. I don't have a specific thing that I know about that I'm thinking about. So I'm saying this kind of like vaguely, but really I don't know. And is there something or not? Or am I just afraid of feeling just in general? And is this all this talk of what I might have done or what I might not have done or what someone might have done to me or might not have done? Um, is that just a defense against what's actually happening? And am I making it out to be worse than it actually is? Or maybe I'm making it out to be better than it actually is? Doesn't matter. It's the, it's the feeling that is the primary thing that, that is scary. And of course, I mean, who would want to, who would want to expose their deepest, darkest feelings, secrets, and things like that on social media? public forever. And yet, well, I've always believed that it is our secrets that make us sick. And on an individual level, that's, I found that to be true from the time when I was a teenager onwards. And I also just feel like that as a collective society, it is our, the underbelly of all of the hidden, um, the dark side that is held in a certain balance of light versus dark that makes us sick is the way we hold it and the way that we are not able to accept it because we do things that are bad all the time, every single day. It's happening right now and it's so easy to try and just hop on to, oh, I'll just be on the light side and I'll just fight against the dark side. You know what I mean? And, and even if you have a inherent understanding of that you're just playing this game and you're dancing and you're part of it and you, you know, we all have our roles to play, there still can be a preference for the light side versus the dark side and superiority on about that. And preference for having freedom versus being imprisoned, um, preference for having freedom versus being punished. And the punishment oftentimes just doesn't fit the crime anyway. So avoiding, trying to avoid that injustice, but it, it's, it's such a, to have to accept that whatever role that I'm playing, I'm playing and, and I'm going to be part of that. You want to believe that you can make a choice. You want to believe that you can, from this moment, choose the right path or the positive direction. And uh, 
I, I, I cannot, still to this day, cannot comprehend, understand, or, or internalize that when people are exposed to environments that influence them to act in certain ways and they are punished for that as if it were their full responsibility that they had complete control over while the other people in those situations are not taking responsibility. Um, the whole process of blame in and of itself to me is a irrelevant and inaccurate way of conceptualizing reality because it doesn't accurately reflect reality. So like, yeah, of course, uh, of course, working towards something like prison reform is a, is the right thing to do, obviously, um, because that accurately reflects reality. Um, but it's just, it's so hard to acknowledge that just inherent, that injustice or unfairness uh, that we perpetrate unto ourselves. It's one thing to be, I don't know, subject to a natural disaster. Oops, my village was destroyed. That's really not fair. How come their village wasn't destroyed? But you're not, um, you're not not free. You know, nature did something, something happened, right? And that's how it, that's how all of this is. Something happened. It's not, you know, this whole, this whole paradox, it always comes down to this whole paradox of do we have choice or not? Do we have free will or not? What's true? Is it both? How, and how does our society reflect that ambiguity or that paradox? And despite our best efforts, it always feels like we're not really measuring up to what's actually happening. So the way that we choose to portray life is not an accurate reflection of what life actually is. That really sort of confounds me. I mean, it's humbling in a sense, but it's also like, I don't know. Actually feeling it to me is the hard part. Because my mind is like, well, this is, do something about it then. Because talk is cheap and feelings don't matter. Only action matters, right? Only, only what you do matters. Only your deeds um, are, are what materialize and, and that's what you are. Or that's, that's what you become and what you create. It's what you do. Um, but if that's the case, and if everyone is out there doing all this great work, and I'm just way behind the curve, I don't know. That feels pretty, like a, a pretty weak judgment to me. I think that, anyways, I'm like really just trailing and rambling. I, this is, ah. It's fine, but I think the video probably even shut off. Like, I don't even know if I have any battery left. Let's see. Yep, that's about to die. Oh, okay. Gotta turn it off now. Bye-bye.